Hey, welcome back. In a previous video, I told you about the ICANN Cycling Chinese Carbon Wheels. This is the Aero 40 model, uh, super light uh, Aero Carbon Wheels. Uh, so go back and watch that video. I'll put a link at the bottom. That gives you the specs on the wheels, how much they weigh, uh, the components in the wheels. They're nice wheels and they sell retail for only $640. Um, at the time I did that video, I said that I would come back and give you some uh, quality control uh, checkup on the wheel to show you what a professional wheel builder does to check a set of wheels before they go out to the customer to make sure they're up to snuff. Um, I'm going to do that today and share it with you, show you the tools that I use, show you how it's done, and we'll see how the uh, Aero 40 wheels, Chinese carbon wheels, uh, stand up uh, the report card on the quality of the wheels. So stay tuned for that. So what we're going to check today is trueness, which means the side to side or lateral play in the wheels, roundness, which is um, up and down, rim centering, which is dish, spoke length, spoke tension, spoke twist. We're going to check to see if the wheels have been stress relieved properly, which I'll explain. And then we'll do a quick uh, couple quick tire checks. We'll look at the rim strip fit, the ease of tire installation, and ease of tire removal. That's a lot to get through, but uh, it won't take that long, and I think you'll be interested in what uh, wheel builders go through to make sure wheels are good quality. We're going to start by checking the trueness, the side to side, and the up and down in the rim. For that, you need a good truing stand, and so I have it in my best truing stand, my Park TS2. This park stand has a custom base, a wood base that a woodworker friend, my friend Gus, built for me years ago. And it makes the, the stand rock solid. When you spin the wheel as fast as you want to spin it, slow as you want to spin it, yank around on it, the, the wheel stays very steady in relationship to the indicators where you gauge the gap and you look at it. Um, also, I've modified it, I've customized it a little bit with just some white poster board so that however you look at whatever angle, you see a white gap between the rim and the indicators, which makes it much easier. So we'll, we'll look at it. I'll bring the camera closer so you can see the gap. We're gonna start with the rear wheel, then I'll put the front wheel in, and we'll look at both of them. So I have the wheel in the truing stand now. This is still the rear wheel. And you'll see that I've set it up so that the left pointer on this side, the indicator, is actually touching the rim, uh, just barely. But that's a good place to start to check the trueness because you can use two things. You can listen to the sound, and as you adjust the indicator away, you start to see the gap. Right now, you'll see it's black on black. You can't see through it. But if I turn the knob right here, you'll see I increase the gap. So let's bring it back down to where it's just barely touching. It's not touching yet. Now you hear it, you hear it's touching. So now let's spin it, see if it's touching evenly all the way around. You can listen to the sound. The sound changes a little, so right away you know it's not perfectly true, otherwise we'd hear exactly the same sound all the way around. Um, that's pretty standard for, for rims. There are issues at seams. Carbon is a composite material that's formed, so we never expect 100% perfection. We want it to be close. You don't need it to be perfect. Uh, you just need it to be close enough so that the brakes don't rub and you have a beautiful wheel. So now what I'm gonna do is make a little gap. Hopefully you can see that there's a little gap there. It's less than a millimeter, it might be a half a millimeter. Now we'll spin it again and see how it looks. So that's a nice wheel. You don't see much deviation there, much side to side. Usually I do it this way. I do it off one indicator, one side of the rim. Uh, maybe my left eye is better. I just used to doing it this way. You can sit like we are, like the camera is, or you can stand and look down. Some people like to work that way. As long as you can see the gap, that's all that matters. Uh, there are builders that don't even, uh, they're actually blind wheel builders that don't look at all. They just listen to the sound. So that's an excellent way to go too. So now that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, bring the caliper, the indicators, underneath the rim. And they're going to kind of disappear because it's black on black. So I'm going to come to the side and we'll look at it uh, from the side. But from the side, you can see that it's not hitting from the side either. There is a slight 
high spot, but it's very slight, probably the same as the side to side, less than a, probably a half a millimeter or less. Here too, you can raise the indicator till it hits. So for roundness, it's pretty good too. I, I'd call this wheel very good, both laterally and round. Um, it's not perfect, but it's, it's very good and it would be a nice riding wheel for sure. So we're checking the side to side, the lateral true on the front wheel, just like before the indicators resting on the rim to start. We'll move it away slightly. Spin the wheel, and we'll check the trueness, the side to side. I'd say the front wheel is not quite as good as the rear wheel. Still acceptable, very good, but if this were my wheel, I'd fine tune that a little bit. Now we're checking the roundness on the front wheel. You can look at the caliper on, on the left on this side. I have it set so it's rubbing a little bit like before. Then we'll lower it a little bit. That's not perfect either. It's good. And we try to go within a half a millimeter, even better if you could, uh, as a custom wheel builder. You try to get the wheels as perfect as you can get them by eye. You try not to see any deviation in the rim. But this is pretty good for, uh, for, for a production wheel. Um, I don't actually know how they build these wheels, whether they're machine built or hand built. But that's not bad, it's very good. So the next check to do is rim centering, or we call it dish, but it's the uh, how well the rim is centered over the hub, uh, which tells you how well the, the wheel will sit centered in the frame. For that we use these, uh, we only need one, but uh, I have two identical tools, one set up for front, front wheels, one set up to check rear wheels. So we'll check the dish on these, these wheels and see how they do. So I'm going to explain what I'm doing because it's going to be hard to show you the gap. Uh, this is another gap sighting exercise. We're going to start with the rear wheel. This tool is set up for rear, checking rear wheels. And you put it on the axle and then there's two feet that rest on the rim. And you adjust the center until you have three points touching the rim. And then, well, one point's touching the axle, the other two points are touching the rim. And then what you do is you flip the wheel over. And if one side touches at all three points, the other side should touch at all three points. And this wheel is fine. The dish is really good on the rear wheel. There's no issues. They did a good job. Excellent. So now change tools. You don't have to change tools, I just like it, speeds it up a little bit. So I'll set it out a little bit so you can see, see how it rocks. Now I'll make the adjustment, still rocking a little bit, still. There, now it's touching here, touching here, touching here. So now I flip the wheel over, should be the same on this side. And it is. So they nailed the dish on both wheels, the centering. Very good, excellent, both wheels. The best way I can show spoke length uh, is with a still photo. So this photo, if you look at it, uh, the black uh, sort of a moon shape on the left um, is the shadow from the rim and the nipple is on the right. You can see that the spoke is right up to the top of the nipple. They're like that on both wheels. So the spoke length is really good on these wheels. Perfect. The next test, and maybe one of the most important tests, is to check the spoke tension on the wheels to see if the uh, spokes are tight enough. If the spokes aren't tight enough, uh, they can loosen as you ride the bike. If they're at the right tension, they'll stay tight for uh, indefinitely. Um, so to do that, I have a very nice tool. I think it's one of the best uh, tensionometers you can buy. It's made by Wheel Fanatic. 
Um, and I've been using it for uh, three years now and it's been indestructible and gives uh, consistent readings. So I'm gonna put it on the spokes and uh, what we do is we check the spokes on the right hand side on the rear wheel and on the front wheel it's, it doesn't matter, you can do either side. But on the rear wheel the spokes on the right have to be a certain tension to keep the wheel centered over the rim to keep it in dish. They're tighter than the left spokes so you check the the right spokes. You can check all the spokes if you want, but you don't really need to to do a quality control check. Uh, we already know the wheel is true. If this, any of the spokes were super loose, the wheel wouldn't be so true and round. So what we're going to do is put this on three or four spokes and see what it tells us. So you rest the tool, the spoke on three points on the tool, and then you let go and a little anvil pushes the pointer and we get a reading of 29. We'll do it a, little, a few spokes over. It gives us 32. Sometimes when you start, you do, it doesn't start exactly on zero. So you do the math, subtract. But we've done three spokes and they're all right around 29 to 32. 29 to 32. So we're getting very consistent tension. That number is a reference and you look on a chart and I know by checking the chart and by the gauge of these spokes, which are Supreme uh, bladed spokes, that this is about 120 uh, kilograms of force, which means that these spokes are nice and tight where we want them. This is exactly what we use here in our wheel shop. Um, under 30 is what we're looking for. So they have nice tension on this wheel. So we're gonna switch, we'll go to the front wheel. So now the front wheel's in there. Just like before, uh, just like I said, we're just gonna do a few spokes on here. Um, this wheel's round, this wheel's true. We would expect to see even spoke tension. So we've got a 37. Actually about 31 if you do the math. That's a 43. That's 44, 41 if you minus the three that we started with. That's another 41. And we're in the 40s again. So these spokes are actually looser than the rear wheel, the right side rear wheel spokes. Um, I'd expect these spokes to be a little tighter. I think that the front wheel tension could have been a little tighter. So now we've checked the spoke tension and now we'll move on um, and we'll look at something interesting called spoke twist, which I'll explain. So these wheels have bladed spokes, which means they're not round. They're sort of uh, oval shaped, uh, not really a blade, but oval shaped. So they're aerodynamic spokes. So in a perfect world, these spokes would all be in the perfect line with each other so that they don't uh, create drag. And building with bladed spokes, you take the time to hold on to the spoke with a special tool. You can see the tool there, it's resting on the spoke. Um, what I'm gonna do is go around and put this little tool on the spokes. If the spoke is oriented correctly, if it's not twisted, that's what we're checking for here, spoke twist, that tool will line up pretty straight with the axle on the hub. Um, and it's a step that a custom wheel builder would definitely take with bladed spokes. He'd take the time to make sure every spoke was oriented the right way. The other thing is when you tension a wheel like this, you don't want to twist the spokes too far because you can stress the spokes and the spokes become weaker. They can even break if they've been twisted too much. So I'm going to go around. This one you can see I put it on there. It's, uh, it's pretty straight. It's actually not perfect. You would adjust this if you were uh, a custom builder for sure. So let's just go around and see how it looks if we go to the next one. This tool is a tight fit. So you can see the orientation here is, com is different. See how it's off from the free hub body? These two lines should be perfectly in line with each other. Let's keep going. We'll go here. It's getting worse, not better. Very tight fit the tool, so it's not, there's no slop in there.
So it's pretty consistently not the way I'd like to see it. So I can't explain what caused this. It could be that they didn't realize you have to not twist the spoke or you have to adjust the spoke as you're working on the wheel truing, as you bring it up to tension. It takes many turns of a nipple to get a spoke to the right tension. There are some that are pretty good. But overall, they didn't do very good with getting the spokes aligned and avoiding spoke twist. So we don't really know how much care they took. The spokes don't look wound all the way around, but they def definitely didn't at least check as a last step, which some builders, that's how they would do it. I'll put the rear wheel in here. I mean, the front wheel. We'll see if it's the same or better. So we're on the front wheel now. If I put the tool on there, we don't have the free hub to look at anymore, but you can see that it's well off, not where we want it. Same thing, pretty consistently twisted too far. Yeah, overall I'd say it's a fail on spoke twist. There should have been another step taken. So what I'm going to do next is uh, check the uh, stress relieving that was done on the wheels. I'm going to do that by putting some pressure sideways on the wheels, both wheels. I start at the valve stem and I gently put some weight on the wheel going around to see if I can. It's similar to what happens when you ride the bike and you load and unload the spokes. If the wheel's too tight or is twisted, the spoke can unwind. You can hear pops or clicks sometimes. Hopefully I wouldn't hear that. Hopefully they did this already when they built the wheels. So that's the rear wheel, that front wheel. You can hear a little noise, but None of the pops, the loud pops and clicks that would tell you that the spokes are wound or the nipples weren't seated in the rim or at the hub. The spokes hadn't been seated at the hub. So the next step is we put them back in the truing stand and look at them. If the stress relieving of the wheels uh, caused an issue, uh, in other words, the wheels had stress built in when they were uh, assembled and they didn't relieve the stress, we would expect the wheel to now be crooked, to be different than what it was before. What we're hoping is it's exactly the same. So if we spin the wheel, it's the same as it was before when we did the trueness check. So the, so the, front, the uh, rear wheel is fine. So now we've got the front wheel in there. Front wheel's exactly the same too. So they stress relieve the wheels fine. They get a check mark on that. We're almost at the end of the checks. We're just gonna check out the tire, see if a, uh, this is a tubeless ready rim, so we're gonna put on a tubeless ready tire and see how easy it is to put the tire on, get the tire off. Um, Cause that's a good test of wheel. If you can't get a tire off and on when you're on the road, uh, I consider that a, a poor rim design. The, design. the rim should be designed so that you can get it on and off without too much trouble. Um, I already put the rim strip on this rim. And I think that the rim strips, I have it separately here, are a little bit too narrow for the rim. I'd like to see the rim strip go from shoulder to shoulder for complete coverage. Uh, if you run sealant, tubeless ready rims, the sealant can get under if it's not completely across. So I think the rim strip should be about at least a millimeter and a half wider on both sides. But I have it in this wheel already, and I'm just going to take this uh, Hutchinson uh, Fusion 5 tire and see how easy it is to put on and take off the rim. I've been putting tires on, taking tires off. 
for a long time. Doesn't usually take much to put a tire on a rim. So the tire's on the rim. That was very easy. Let's see if I can get it off by hand. Definitely not easy. But you can get it up by hand if you try hard enough. And it would come off easy with tire levers. But I'd say that's a very nice fit tire and rim. Tubeless ready tire on tubeless ready rim. You wouldn't have any problem fixing this on the side of the road or installing tires. So I give them high marks on that. They did a good job there. So we're back in my home shop. I know there was a lot of uh, explanations and tests that I did on the wheels. But I hope uh, you found it interesting and learned some things about how a pro wheel builder checks out uh, wheels. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, do a report card, an overall report card on the wheels. We'll grade them and then I'll give you an overall assessment. So I prepared a school report card here. And we'll go down the list. First we check trueness and roundness on both wheels. And both wheels were close but not perfect. So I'm going to give them a A minus, A minus. Rim centering was perfect, so I'm going to give them an A. Spoke length was perfect, couldn't have been any better. That's a hard one to get. The spoke length perfect is not easy. Spoke tension was really good on the rear wheel. But it was a little loose on the front wheel. So here, because that's a significant uh, issue, something I would definitely address. Although if you were a lightweight rider, maybe you could get away with that front wheel like that. Uh, even a big rider, if you're a smooth rider, it might be okay. But I'd like to see that tighter. So I'm going to give them a B on spoke tension. Um, spoke twist was a fail. Um, either they didn't check it. Uh, I'm just not sure what went wrong, but it definitely isn't the way it should be on these wheels, and it's something that you're going to want to fix. So I'm actually going to give them an F on spoke twist, because I don't know what. It could be a lot worse. Having them twisted is just one issue. We don't know how far they twisted them. Rim strip fit, that's, you could almost make it work with tubes. It'll work okay, so I'm not going to fail them, but uh, it's not as good as it could be, so I'm going to give them a C. But tire on and off is a breeze. It works really well, so I'm going to give them an A. Um, so overall, they did pretty good. But um, I think as a, a professional wheel builder looking at these wheels, um, I'm pretty impressed overall. I think these would make a nice pair of wheels, but I think that if you know enough about wheels, if you actually check the wheels, you'd either fix them yourself, the spoke twist, and add tension to the front wheel, maybe even try to find true the side to side and the roundness a little bit, um, or you'd pay somebody to do it. If you didn't know any better, because these wheels are centered perfect, because the tension is reasonable, um, because they are nice and true and round, you could put them on a bike and ride them and enjoy them and have no problems. But if you're fussy, if you thought you were getting perfect wheels, or you knew enough about wheels, you'd probably want to spend some time or pay a professional wheel builder to take them to the next level. So I recommend the wheels, but I recommend them with, a, with the caveat that it'd be a good idea to inspect them and make sure you get a pair where everything has been checked uh, properly. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.